Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to Unfiltered with Jason Gazak. We are listening to 93.3 Real Talk Radio, or maybe you have the app and you're listening on the app, but either way, we welcome you to the show. My name is Jason. I'm a pastor out in St. Clair, Missouri. Uh, Roots Church is the name of the church that I pastor, and this is a platform for me to talk about social, political, and biblical issues. Uh, it's I'm able to give my opinion on these topics, and right now we've been in this culture war with sex and indoctrination, and so today we're going to be talking about sex education versus sex indoctrination. Um, so that's going to be most of the show today. I'm, I'm still trying to decide if I want to do this day in history in the second segment, I probably will, and then we'll go back into the third segment, picking you up and talking about this particular topic. <clears throat> so let's get into this today. Um, before we do, though, let me just uh, remind you that if you want to text me, that number is 314-924-4215. Again, 314-924-4215. Or you can download the app and you can talk to me on the Real Talk Radio app. Either way, I'd love to hear your opinion. I'd love to hear your voice. I would love for you to just let me know what you think. I also would love to hear that if there's a topic that you would like for me to discuss and want my opinion on or, or for me to research, I'd love to know what that is as well. So let's go ahead and get started in this. Uh, the Merriam Dictionary says that sex education, this is literally in the Merriam Dictionary. What is sex education? It's education in schools about sex. That's the only definition that it gives. So are we saying now that the world is telling us sex education is from schools only? Because in my opinion, sex education needs to come from the parents mainly. We are the ones that need to be teaching our kids about sex from our belief system, what we believe. And of course, biologically speaking, there is only male and female sexes. Now, I know some of you might disagree with that. I would venture to say the majority of the people listening to this show do agree that there is only two genders, male and female. So here's the question I have for you today. What age do you feel sex education needs to be discussed in the classroom? And should they teach inclusivity? Point of view or stick to the way God made us, male and female? Because 15 years ago, we would n have never, ever thought that we would be discussing this. But boy, have times changed. This is now a war on culture. And guess what? We set the culture. Not the media, not the government, not movie stars. We as a people. So at Rue Church, we have a culture we set <coughs> in the church. We, we have a culture that anyone is welcome to our church. You can be gay. You can be lesbian. You can be binary. You can have whatever gender you want. You are welcome at our church. However, we are going to teach God's word at our church, and we won't hold back from the way we believe because we believe that those types of behaviors are not godly behaviors. We're going to love you, and we're going to care for you as a person. We're going to hope that God sets you free from the lies that the enemy tries to tell you and from the lies of our world and, and our government, but we're still going to care about you. That's a culture that we want to set. We want to set a culture in our church that everyone's welcome. We want to have a church where everyone feels like they belong. But that doesn't mean that we're going to hold back from the Word of God and not teach what His Word says. So 15 years ago, <clears throat> I never thought we'd be talking about this. I never thought that we'd have to teach our kids or uh, protect our kids from someone coming in the school claiming that they're a cat or claiming that they use pronouns now or claiming that they aren't a sex, that they're non-binary. They don't know what they are. I just can't believe we are actually talking about that today. Now today, <clears throat> you got school boards, school boards versus moms and dads. And of course, guess what? I hope to change this. If I win the school board seat out in St. Clair, Missouri, as many of you know, I'm running for school board and I hope to protect these kids. I, I hope to continue to help teachers have the tools necessary to teach these students and not allow these types of political agendas uh, come into the school system that create massive distraction from what we're really there to learn, which is more about what reading and writing and science, and math, and history. Why are we taking all this time to teach our kids about 
gender doesn't make sense, especially at an early age, kindergarten, first grade. You're going to hear later in this show a ton of different stories that are real stories that are happening in schools across America that are literally happening right now that I want to make you aware of today. You know, like for instance, there, New Jersey in, in, last, in, in 2022, they decided they would make it lawful to start teaching first graders about gender identity. Here is what the curriculum states, and I quote, You might feel like you're a boy if you, even if you have body parts that, are, that some people might tell you are girl parts. You might feel like you're a girl even if you have body parts that some people might tell you are boy parts. And you might not feel like you're a boy or a girl, but you're a little bit of both. No matter how you feel, you're perfectly normal. End quote. This is insane that this school is allowing to teach boys and girls in the first grade this type of behavior. These kids can't even read or write, but boy, we'll spend all the time teaching them about gender and which is none of their business to be teaching. That is the parents' job. Uh, Evston Skokie School District 65, they've adopted an LGBTQ plus curriculum that will teach pre-K and kindergartners about people who have more than one gender or no gender at all. And then kids in the first grade, they can pick their own pronouns. And once they pick their pronoun, they are taught that those pronouns can change. All feelings are respected at all times in the school district. They also teach third graders that all gender is binary. You get to pick what you want to be no matter the parts that you've been born with. You decide. You decide your gender in the third grade. These third graders can barely read and barely write, but yet they're going to pick their gender. They're going to decide what what they are. That's already been decided at birth. Thank God Florida has stepped in and said no more. And we're, we're setting new legislation that it's out of bounds to discuss sexual orientation in grade schools. Thank God Florida has stepped up, and there's other states um, – that are absolutely doing the same thing. Recently, in the Glendale Unified School District in California, parents confronted the school board to discuss outrage that a third grade teacher showed videos of Gay Pride Month, and some of the video that she showed had nudity and discussion of sexual arousal. To third graders, what's sad is that parents now have to be extra cautious with the school for teaching things that are none of their business to teach. I mean, it's not surprising at all that parents are wanting to protect their kids from inappropriate lessons that should never be taught in the school. Reading and writing and math and science are all subjects, along with history, that you should be focusing on as a school and as a teacher, not on gender identity. What is this madness and who is behind it? We all know that the devil is behind it. And he uses people to get the manifestation of his work into this world. Listen, you're not crazy for wanting to protect your kids and care about what is being taught in your public school. You are not crazy. They are crazy for wanting us to accept the teachings of gender equality in second grade or in kindergarten or even third grade. We did not start this cultural war. They did. But we have to fight it. We can't sit back and put our head in the sand. We can't sit back and say, well, God's in total control, so let's just not do anything about it. We know the world's going to end. No, we have to steward what God has given us. And he has given us this great nation that we live in that, yes, we are to love people. Yes, we are to accept people but we do not have to accept their behavior we do not have to to succumb to the uh idiotic viewpoint that you are not male or female when you have particular body parts we have to do something about it and that is one reason why i'm running for school board 
is to protect our kids and our community from this nonsense that could easily come our way. I also want to help educate my congregation at the church or anyone listening to the podcast or the radio show or whatever form of social media that you hear me talk on. This is about educating you. This is about us fighting for our future generations, generations, our kids, kids, our kids, kids, kids. We have no idea when Jesus is coming back. We can't just let the world fall apart and allow the left, allow the liberalism to win this cultural war. It only takes one person to start the fight, but it's going to take many to win the battle. We got to win this battle, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to be talking more about this in just a moment. So let's take a break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Real Talk Radio Network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from the break, and we just got through talking a little bit about what we're going to talk about uh, later on. Uh, this morning in the segment but in this segment I want to talk about a couple of things first of all I need to talk about the Super Bowl because that is happening tomorrow tomorrow Super Bowl is happening we have the Kansas City Chiefs against the Philadelphia Eagles and yes I, I predicted the 49ers to win and I also predicted the Bengals to win and I have lost both of those games I admit it now I do believe the 49ers would have won if they would not have lost their quarterback Brock Purdy But that's the way the game's played, and guess what? The Eagles deserve the win, and I am going to be pulling for the Eagles tomorrow in Super Bowl, but I will be wearing my 49er gear because I am a 49ers fan through and through. Who are you rooting for? Let me know in the chat. Are you rooting for the Eagles, or are you rooting for the Chiefs? And I get it. Some of you want both teams to lose. I've been seeing that happen. Well, both teams aren't going to lose. That's not even possible. So pick a winner. Let me know who you want to win because it'll be a good time with the Super Bowl parties that'll be happening. I'm just going to ask you to be safe, though, in those parties. You never want to do anything stupid. So be safe, be safe, be safe. All right, let's talk about this day in history in this segment. Um, On February... 11th February 11th Nelson Mandela was released from prison that's what we're going to find out in this segment let me just scroll this down a little bit so I can see here's what it says I'm just going to read to you this day in history it says Nelson Mandela leader of the movement to end South African um, is released from prison after 27 years on February 11th 1990 in 1944 Mandela, who was a lawyer, joined the African National Congress, that was the ANC, the oldest black political organization in South Africa, where he became a leader of Johannesburg, youth wing of the ANC. In 1952, he became deputy national president of the ANC, advocating nonviolent resistance to apartheid. I don't even know how to say that word. But anyway, South Africa's institutionalized system of white supremacy and racial segregation. However, after the massacre of a peaceful black demonstrators at Sharpville in 1960, Nelson helped organize a a paramilitary branch of the ANC to engage in guerrilla warfare against the white minority government. In 1961, he was arrested for treason, and although acquitted, he was arrested again in 1962 for illegally leaving the country. Convicted and sentenced to five years at Robben Island Prison, he was put on trial again in 1964 on charges of sabotage. And in 1964, June of 64, he was convicted along with several other ANC leaders and sentenced to life in prison. Mandela spent the first 18 of his 27 years in jail at the brutal Robben Island prison. Confined to a small cell without a bed or plumbing, he was forced to do hard labor in a quarry. He could write and receive a letter once every six months, and once a year, he was allowed to meet with a visitor for 30 minutes. Once a year! However, Mandela's resolve remained unbroken, and while remaining the symbolic leader of the anti-apartheid movement, He led a movement of civil disobedience at the prison that coerced South African officials into drastically improving conditions on Robben Island. He was later moved to another location where he lived under house arrest. 
In 1989, uh, F.W.D. Clerk became South African president and set about dismantling apartheid. Uh, De Klerk lifted the ban on the ANC suspended executions and in February of 1990 ordered the release of Nelson Mandela. Mandela subsequently led the ANC in its negotiations with the minority government for an end to apartheid and the establishment of a multiracial government. In 1993, Mandela and De Klerk were jointly awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. One year later, the ANC won an electoral majority in the country's first free elections, and Mandela was elected South Africa's president. Mandela ended up retiring from politics in 1999, but remained a global advocate for peace and social justice until his death in December of 2013. I remember the story of Nelson Mandela. I was alive back in those days. I wasn't as involved in the politics as I am today, but that's what happened on September 11th. Let's look at a few other things. This is one we don't want to talk about. It says right here in 2020, February the 11th, the World Health Organization officially names the novel coronavirus disease COVID-19. I know we're all still trying to forget that. Um, In 2012, on February 11th, we see that pop star Whitney Houston dies at the age of 48. We see in 1970... On February 11th, that Japan launched its first satellite. Wow. Lots of cool things on this day in history. I don't know how you feel about some of these things that I read when it comes to this day in history, but it's really just talking about the history and reminding ourselves what has happened, obviously, in the past. And and sometimes it stirs up great conversation. Well, that, my friends is what is going on today. What else you have going on today? It's Saturday. It's the weekend. Or maybe you're listening today. It's Sunday because this is the rebroadcast. Not sure. Either way, guess what? I'm glad you're joining me right here on Real Talk Radio on Unfiltered. All right. So we only have a couple minutes. But let me go ahead and just... As we get ready to jump into the meat and potato segment, which is the third segment, which will be after this break coming up here in just a couple minutes, let me kind of go ahead and set up what we're going to talk about. We're, we're going to talk about sex education in public schools. We're going to talk about the sexualization of children and the LGBTQ indoctrination that is absolutely happening in schools. There is a difference between educating kids on sex and indoctrinating them on beliefs, you know, in in your belief system. Now, again, this can go either way. And, of course, I would be an advocate, right, of talking about the biblical view of what sex is in the school. We cannot do that, and that is okay, because there's still what we call an ethical and moral viewpoint. You don't even have to be a Christian to understand this stuff. You don't have to be a Christian to understand that there's only two genders. You don't have to be a Christian to understand that being married is the ultimate relationship of when you have sex. You you don't have to you don't have to be a Christian to say to your kids, "Don't go have sex at an early age. It's not right. Wait till you're married." That's something that most people say. Not today, of course. Today it's just whatever. It looks different. But our our morale compass has gone out the window. Where is the moral compass? It's gone. What do you use as your moral compass? For us Christians, we're supposed to use the Bible as our moral compass. That's why we would be considered to have a biblical worldview, because we're viewing the world and making our decisions through the lens of the Bible. And what's sad, what's very, very sad, there are a lot of people that say they have a biblical worldview, but when you get asked specific questions, you find the reality that only 6% of the adult population has an adult has a biblical world view. That is sad. And because of that, because we do not have a biblical world view, because we do not have Christians becoming politicians or Christians in our government, this is why we have the indoctrination of gender equality or gender identity. Let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll dive into this. 
You're listening to Real Talk Radio Network. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back from the break, and we're going to be talking about sex education in public schools and the sexualization of children and in the, the LGBTQ indoctrination that is happening with gender identity, being binary, et cetera, et cetera. Now, just so you know where I got this information, because I don't just pull this stuff out of my rear end. I know some of you might think I do. You just think I think of this, and this is just where it is. No, I do a lot of research. I do a ton of reading on these topics. I, I try to find the best research that fits Again, my biblical viewpoint, because that's the way I live my life. I don't leave church at home. It goes with me everywhere I go. My ministry is everywhere I go. My life is my ministry, no matter if it's with my kids or if it's with my wife, as a husband, a dad, or as a friend, or as a pastor, or even a political leader, whatever that may look like, I take church everywhere I go. So I get this information, and um, this lady, her name is Kathy Roos, and she put out this pamphlet. And it was basically talking about sex, sex education in public schools and the sexualization of children and the, the LGBTQ indoctrination. And so I'm just going to read you. I'm going to spend the rest of the time just reading you some of this nonsense that we see. There's no way that I could hit everything that I would love to talk about. There's no way I can do it. But did you know, did you know that there are some public schools teaching children that they could be born in the wrong body? I mean, I talked about it in the first segment. There are literally schools in our country that are teaching kids that they could be born in the wrong body because they feel like they're a girl, but they have boy parts, or that they have girl parts and they feel like they're a boy. There are teachers, there are public schools teaching your kids this nonsense. They are teaching young teens. They're showing young teens in videos techniques to pleasure their sex partners. Come on, why in the world do we need to be the one teaching this nonsense? Now, it's not nonsense if you're married. It's not nonsense, of, excuse me, if you're of age. It's nonsense that you'd be teaching this to a kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth grader. I don't even want it being taught as a sixth grader, but let me tell you something. Sixth graders know probably more than most parents do when it comes about sex. That's why it's important for parents to talk about sex with their children and not let the school do it or not let the media do it or not let a TV program do it. Did you know that students are told how to get secret abortions without telling their parents? There are teachers telling students how to have an abortion secretively without telling their parents. Now, that is insane when I think about that. What person in their right mind would do that? Let me ask you this question. Would you want somebody doing that to your child? I don't care where your thoughts are on the spectrum. If you're, if you're all for it, would you want your child, would you want someone else that you do not know telling your kid what they need to be doing or what they can be doing and, and do it secretively so you don't find out? I don't think you would like that. I don't care where you are on the spectrum. No, no parent wants that for their kids. And most of us, you know what? We remember what sex education was when we were in school. We know what it was like when it was in school. It was a couple of uncomfortable hours in biology class. You know, the teacher gets up, the lines are drawing, you know, line drawing showing human growth and development. You know, there's these admonitions to be careful, respect every, uh, you know, respect other people. And then, of course, you save sex for marriage. That's literally what it was. You never learn. In my, in my day and age, I was graduated in 1993. My whole entire grade school and high school life, I never was taught how to put a condom on a banana. That would never got brought out. I don't even know at what age that started happening. I don't even know what age these topics started coming out where the school began to tell and teach sex education at such a young age. It's different today, isn't it? Now it's called the facts of life, right? The the facts of life have not changed, but the inclusivity and the sex positivity and all the other popular buzzwords that we're seeing, the concepts, have actually changed sex education. And now, 
we're basically indoctrinating our kids at a very young age to uh, believe and agree with, hey, if you don't feel like you're a boy, then you're not a boy. That is insane. With these children can't hardly read and write. They don't know even multiplication. But yet we're going to teach them what their sex is, the most important thing about their whole body. And we're going to tell them what they, that they can be what they want to be or they can be what they feel. And I mean, really, as a nation, you know what we've done? We've outsourced sex education. We no longer do it in the home like it used to be. We've outsourced it to teachers who do not believe the way we believe. So talking to children about sexuality is highly sensitive. It's an endeavor that we do. It's an emotionally charged, even, even under the best circumstances. And as a nation, we've outsourced sex ed. As a matter of fact, frankly, most parents really don't even want to have these awkward conversations with their children. I mean, as a pastor, I know this. I was a youth pastor, and when you would talk to t- when you would talk to kids, they would we would ask them how many of, how many of you of your parents you know talk to you about sex, and it would literally be like three out of a hundred kids would raise their hand. Most parents don't want to talk about this subject with their kids because it is awkward. But it's only awkward because you make it awkward. It's only awkward because the world makes it awkward. But when you look at it and view it through God's eyes and the way he designed us as human beings, men and women, different, you can't fit a round, a, a, a square peg in a round hole. It just don't work that way. It's not supposed to work that way. It's not natural for any human being or even animal to act the way humans are acting today. And so, yes, parents instinctively don't want to disturb the natural innocence and sexual latency period for puberty. When is the right time to talk about sex with your child? At what age does that look like? Well, it can be different for every student. What, what we taught for our oldest today is different than when we taught for our youngest. The times have changed. Education is out there more. There's, more, there's a plethora of information that you can get on your phone that you can Google and search. and mo- It's in movies. So kids are becoming younger and younger, no doubt. But we want to try to keep our kids as innocent as possible as long as we can when it comes to sex. We don't need them exploring this area even more because of us talking about it. We need them to naturally go through whatever it is that God allows them to go through. And then we as parents begin to teach them and coach them through these things. Because when education experts offer to handle the topic, it can be appealing Because they're experts, especially when they promise us that lessons will be ordered around saving sex for marriage, creating strong families, and protecting children's health and well-being. We're all about that. (laughs) However, the reality, that is not what's happening in school. A a major new study reveals failure rates as high as 87% for school-based sex ed programs. Even worse, some programs actually result in increased sexual activity, increased in number of sex partners, and has increased in sexual experimentation by students. And yet, the school systems are devoting more classroom time to learn about gender and sex than they are about math or reading or writing or even history. The statistic says that there are 70 hours a week in one district that they're taking classroom time devoted, significant classroom time, 70 hours a week to talk about sex. That is insane. It's insane what we're seeing out there. It's devastating. And and two-thirds of American students can't read at grade level and yet reading scores have worsened in 31 states. This country is in a student achievement crisis. That, the education secretary, Betsy DeVos, says that our country is in, an, is in a student achievement crisis. Why? Because we're focusing on the wrong things. Wow. I mean, I'm looking at just some of this information I mean, if you look at the education has given, given way to the indoctrination, consider the emergency of the no opt-out laws and politics that revoke the right of parents to opt their children out of sexually-based lessons. 
California, and Illinois have taken this radical step. And when an Illinois parents started to keep started keeping their uh, kids home during the LGBTQ week because they did not want their kids involved, they wanted to opt out of that participation. The school board's vice president suggesting not telling the parents when it would occur so that way they couldn't pull their their kids out. Now you tell me how malicious that is. Here you have this vice president of a school board literally suggesting, hey, let's just not tell the parents when this is going to happen so these kids aren't pulled out of school because you and I both know that when kids are pulled out of school, they lose funding. They get so much money for however many days that these kids and, and the education and the, cl- and the test scores and everything else, they are funded by those things. And so these schools are doing anything and everything they can because they want the funding. I have a friend of mine, Brian Avis, that says, follow the money, follow the money. Well, guess what? That's exactly what you should be doing right here. It's jacked up. And so, of course, today, parents have two main concerns about sex ed, and that is that it sexualizes children and that it is, a, and it is loaded with the LGBTQ indoctrination. That's what's going on right now in many, many schools across America is they are sexualizing children at such an early age. They're teaching them about gender identity. They're teaching them that it's okay to feel the way they feel. It's teaching them that they can choose their gender no matter how they feel. And it's okay if you don't know, then you would be considered non-binary. That is the crap that is being taught in schools. Now, that's not being taught out in our school right now. Thankfully, we have a current school board. Thankfully, we have a very good superintendent. And thankfully, we have a very good administration and teachers that would not stand for that. But that doesn't mean that one day that somebody's going to come up and try to force this upon our school district or your school district. And as a matter of fact, I know there are some of you listening right now that this has happened in your school district. That is why moms are rising up. But it doesn't need to be just moms. It also needs to be dads. Dads and moms need to show up at these school board meetings and they need to raise cane. They need to fight for their children's rights. They need to fight for the parents' rights to know what is going on in that school and what is being taught. And I, I want to know. Because the sexualization of children is not healthy. And year after year, sex ed programs push the limits on what is appropriate, both in terms of the material presented to the students and at the age in which it's being presented. So in many school districts today, lessons introduce sexual concepts to very young children at very young ages, promoting risky sexual behavior to vulnerable teens and preteens. We got to take a break. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the last segment of Unfiltered. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you've enjoyed the information that's been brought forth for you today. I'd like to continue and keep discussing the sex education versus sex indoctrination. I mean, in many school systems right now, sex education has become a vehicle for an agenda-driven curriculum that actually sexualizes children what was obviously simply imparting science-based information and skills to save sex until marriage has now become creating more of a young radical sexual ideologues with the desire to exercise their sexual rights they're literally preparing children to have sex with multiple partners over the course of a lifetime I mean, that, that's insane that they would literally teach this nonsense. And so this is obviously not in line with a Christian faith. I can tell you that right now. I mean, they have how-to sex workshop for kids going on. The California State Board of Education, for example, they recently adopted a health education curriculum framework that includes recommendations for radical sex and gender education instructional materials. This framework is intended to be a guide for the state's public schools. I mean, lessons offer tips like foreplay can be enjoyable in itself and can lead to orgasm for both partners without having intercourse. This is literally what they're teaching our kids in California. And the, and the state board approved this crap in a public school. And you wonder why kids are leaving the public school in droves. 
I mean, when this, if this crap continues, there won't be a public school because people with the in, with with sanity, people that are sane and and have moral values, are going to be ripping their kids out of the public school because of this nonsense right here. Teaching their kids. There's a curriculum in Austin, Texas, that encourages even a pre uh, uh, these children to consider vaginal intercourse and oral intercourse and anal intercourse in Austin, Texas. They are teaching kids pre-puberty. I mean, to fathom this in our school is nuts. And you bet your butt parents are angry. You know what they've done? They've gone to school board meetings demanding to know who gave the school district the right to teach their children how to have anal and oral sex in Austin, Texas. Schools in Indiana are actually sending teens shopping for condoms with a worksheet to fill out as homework to to compare the different brands and the prices and the types of lubrication, whether or not they're comfortable, you know, with their sh- with them shopping in the store for condoms and lube. Schools are teaching their kids to go do this as homework. Parents in Virginia in a high school were outraged when they learned that their ninth graders were shown videos teaching penis pleasure how to stimulate the prostate inside and the joys of sex toys the video was created by a youtube star with ties to planned parenthood this is a school in rural virginia in rural america Don't think for one second that this could not happen in your school near you. What am I doing? I'm trying to make you aware. I'm trying to educate you to not have your head in the sand and for you to fight at your local school board. Parents, get involved with your kids. Don't allow the public school to be the babysitter for your kids. Don't rely on the public school to be the one to teach your kids about moral and ethical and political and social agendas out there. They should be teaching history. They should be teaching mathematics. They should be teaching reading and writing and biology and, and you know, dissecting frogs and pigs like we used to do. And how, the, how your body works and the different organs in your body and the different nerves and how all the nervous system works. And those are things that we need to be teaching our kids. Not this nonsense that people are so focused on. I mean, Planned Parenthood is the nation's largest abortion business. And it's also the business of pushing its own version of radical sex ed. Planned Parenthood. They claim to be the single largest provider of sex education in the United States. You know what their campaign is called or what their curriculum called? Get Real. It's called Get Real. And it includes instructions for 7th graders on how to use grocery store. Oh, I'm not even going to say. It's insane, this curriculum. It also teaches kids how how to consent to have sex. So that way we can, no longer they will be a victim if they don't really want to. They're teaching them how they can consent to it. It's a trend in the sex education to push sexual consent, presumably to equip kids to resist committing or being a victim of sexual assault. And guess what? Many parents, they're not buying it. They are not buying it. Listen to the statement from the Get Real Trainer. Okay, this is from the Planned Parenthood League of Massachusetts. It says, building skills, okay, quote, building skills around consent means moving beyond the how to say no model of teaching refusal skills to also teach young people how to ask for consent, end quote. I mean, Massachusetts politicians are considering a statewide sex ed curriculum mandate with lessons for students on how to make healthy decisions about relationships and sexuality, including affirmative and voluntary consent to engage in physical or sexual activity. I mean, this this information is loaded for all of you to go look at. You can go search it. You can find story after story after story in school after school what is happening to your children. And to think 
that it can't happen here, oh, it can. And I believe there will be a time that it will try to get pushed into the school. I believe there's going to be a time where in the church, we are going to try to be forced to marry gay people or to accept a way a person's behavior is in the church and that our religious beliefs aren't going to matter. I can tell you right now that'll never happen for us. It's going to try to get pushed in other churches. Guaranteed, it already has in some. And there's legal battles everywhere. And trust me, people, we know the rules. We know what we can and cannot do. We know what we can and cannot say. We've educated ourselves on this because we as a church have to fight for the beliefs of what we believe and what we're, our freedom consists of. We have to get smarter. We have to get, we have to get educated. Is this what it should all be about? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Life as a Christian is not just all about this. There are so many other topics. There are so many other things that we will discuss, that we should discuss. But the one thing that frustrates me is so many Christians believe that we need to keep these social and political issues out of the church. That's the nonsense that I'm seeing. And on top of that, that is why we're seeing such a small percentage of biblical worldview Christians. Because a biblical worldview means you take your viewpoint everywhere you go. But there's so many believers out there that say, no, I leave my church stuff at home, and what happens out in the social world is what the social world does. So they say they have a biblical worldview, but really when they're asked specific questions like, do you think kids should be taught gender equality in school? They say, well, yes. No. The answer to that is no. No, no, no. We do not want our young children being taught these things. Now, I don't know, but I've got some, you know, exciting news coming up. I mean, I don't need, I can't even go through the rest of this. I mean, this is like a 56 page uh, research that was done. And, and I mean, literally there are just tons and tons of facts in this research. I don't even have time to read it to you. I don't even have near of enough time to read all the different things that these schools and all the curriculum in different <coughs> states and um, that are being pushed. And a lot of it, don't get me wrong, I see a lot of these statistics happening in California, Virginia, West Virginia, you know, New York, Massachusetts, things like that. Not a lot of it right now that I'm reading is happening in the Midwest where we're from. There's some, but it's not super crazy like we're seeing in other states, thankfully. But we gotta we we have got to do something about this. We have got to change this culture. We have got to get back to the basics and stop allowing programs like Planned Parenthood, who think everybody thinks they're like the greatest thing on earth. They're not. They're evil. It's evil being done through Planned Parenthood. Abortions. It's evil. Teaching kids about sex ed at in kindergarten is evil. Letting them be able to choose their identity, evil. Those are evil, evil viewpoints. All right, well, I think I've said enough today. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about, but in the future, because I am running for school board, I do have two guests that I hope to bring on in the future. I'll, I'll, once I confirm that it's going to happen, I'll let everybody know about it. But right now, just stay tuned. Thank you so much for listening to Unfiltered with me, Jason Gazak, and I hope you come back next week and listen again. And don't forget to follow me on all social media. Have a great day. You're listening to Real Talk Radio Network. Mm-hmm.